previous lecture, we have seen how to forecast future demand with the Holt Winters method by using three variables the average, the trend, and the seasonal factors. We have also analyzed how to initialize the average, the trend, and the seasonal factors based on the time series of the past demand. In this lecture, we are going to analyze how to apply the old winters forecasting method when new values of demand become available. In other words, we have to understand how to update the three variables, that is the average, the trend, and seasonal factors, in order to update our forecast. In order to do so, the Holt Winters method uses exponential smoothing. Let's start with the average 80. Alpha is a smoothing coefficient and its value can range from 0 to 1. The new value of the average is got from the weighted average between the more recent value of demand, the T, adjusted to remove the seasonality, and the previous forecast, FT, once again adjusted to remove the seasonality. In fact, the forecasted demand in period T is equal to A T minus 1 plus trend in T minus 1 all per the seasonality in T minus L. So this term A T minus 1 plus T in T minus 1 is equal to the forecast FT divided by the seasonal factor S in T minus L. If alpha is near to 1, the forecasting model is very responsive to changes in the average, since recent values are weighted more than previous data. On the contrary, if alpha is near to zero, the forecasting method is very static, since variations in recent values have a limited effect on the updated average. After having updated the average, we can compute the new trend. The updated value of the trend is got from the weighted average between an estimation of the trend based on recent values, that is the difference between the average in t and the average in the previous period, t minus 1, and the previous value of the trend. Once again, gamma is a smoothing coefficient ranging from 0 to 1, and it affects the responsiveness of the model to changes in the trend. As for the seasonal factors at the end of period T, we can use this formula. This updated seasonal factor, ST, is got from the weighted average between the new seasonal factor that is computed dividing the value of demand in T by the average computed at the end of period T and the previous value of the seasonal factor, S in T minus L. Remember that L indicates the seasonality. Once again, beta is a smoothing coefficient ranging from 0 to 1, and it affects the responsiveness to changes in the seasonal factors. Let's see an example. We can go on with the same example introduced in the previous lecture. We want to forecast the future demand by applying the old winters method using the following smoothing coefficient, alpha for the average 0.4, gamma for the trend 0.5, and beta for the seasonality, 0.2. Assume that now we are at the end of the first quarter of 2017, and the actual demand in the first quarter was 125 pieces. In order to forecast the demand in the second quarter, we need to update the average and the trend. Let's start with the average, 80. We need to use the smoothing coefficient alpha which is equal to 0.4. The value of the average in the first quarter of 2017 is got from the weighted average between the actual demand in the first quarter of 2017, that is 125, divided by the seasonality factor of the first quarter we have computed in the initialization phase, 0.855, and the sum of the previous average, A0, 136.87 and the trend T0 2.81. Therefore, we obtain that the updated value of the average is equal to 142.29 pieces. This value is higher than before. This means that the demand is increasing. Now we can update the trend. This time we have to use the smoothing coefficient gamma, which is equal to 0.5. The value of the trend in the first quarter of 2017 
is got from the uh, weighted average between the previous trend, T0, 2.81, and the proxy of the new trend that is assessed as the difference between the new value of the average, 142.29, and the previous one, 136.87. We obtain about four pieces per quarter. We still have a quite limited trend. On the basis of these new values, we can obtain the forecast for the second quarter of 2017, which is equal to the new average plus the new trend, all multiplied by the seasonal factor of the second quarter. Therefore, we obtain 139.82 pieces. Once again, we can be interested also in forecasting the demand in the next quarters. This can be done using the same approach already analyzed in the previous lecture. It is important to notice that if you want to forecast the demand in the first quarter of 2018, we need to update also the seasonal factor of the first quarter. We still have to do another important remark related to the application of the old winters method. Up to this point, we have assumed to know the values of the smoothing coefficients alpha, beta and gamma. But how can we define them in a real context when we want to apply this method to forecast future demand? In order to answer to this question, let's analyze the implementation process of the old Winters method. We can distinguish three phases, initialization, adaptation and forecasting. During the initialization, we use the formulas we have seen before to compute the initial values of the average, the trend and the seasonal factors A0, T0, S0 and so on. Once defined the initial values of the main variables, in the adaptation phase we simulate the forecasting process using predefined values for the smoothing coefficients, for example random values. After simulating the forecast for one year, it is possible to do a gap analysis between the real demand and the forecasted values. Then we can analyze how to obtain better forecasts by changing the values of the smoothing coefficients. In this way, we define the best values of the smoothing coefficients. Then we can start to use the old Winters method to forecast future demand. In these lectures, we have seen how the old Winters method can be used to forecast future demand, and we have seen a numerical example to better understand how this method can be applied. Mm -hmm.